These are what I call vellum prints, and I am using vellum. It's, a, it's an artificial vellum. It's not the actual animal skin vellum. But it is a very archival material, and that's why I chose it for these prints. What I'm doing here is using the printer. I'm using my laser, I'm sorry, my inkjet printer to create originals. I'm using my own photographs, but I'm using the inkjet printer to place the color on the page. And I set up a constraint for myself for this particular project where I'm choosing uh, photographs that are more geometric and then using um, a step-by-step -step process where I take the original image at 100% run it through the inkjet printer, reduce the image 33%, and rotate it or invert it, run it through the inkjet printer again, reduce the image again by 33%, and repeat. So in this first one, title is Reality Frames, the original photograph is a very simple banal photograph of the side of a building and you can see here you can see the bricks um, I rotated it in 90 degrees on the wall was a it was a frame that I guess was used for advertisements so I fed that in at 100% reduced it 33% to 66 that's the next uh, recursion, then reduced again by 33%, and so on. So it was done three times. The next one is called Morphic Fields. Same process. Um, I don't remember what the actual photograph was of this. I think maybe it was just like a, a cracked sidewalk or something that had these kind of uh, branching uh, objects in them. This one's called Fisher. This is a spiral staircase in, a, in an Art Deco building in Chicago. And what I did here w was not three iterations, it's only two. So it's the original photograph of the stairway, then reduced 33% and rotated, and then put, it, put through the printer again. So that's only one iteration. Number four is called Dead Reds. Uh, again, I don't remember what the original image was, but this one has a little bit of color in it. Um, I think I, I think on the third pass through, I had added two squares of blue and just added that as a layer. It's, it's an arbitrary layer. It, it's not in the original image. Um, Number five is Memnest. Um, same process. Uh, looks like some kind of a plant of some kind. Number six is called Banality Resolved. This is some kind of a side of a building. Uh, it's basically street photography. And in this one, it's only it's only two pass-throughs. And I think on the second pass through, it looks like a 90 degree rotation. Because if I did it any more than that, these black areas would, 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 it would just make it too dark. So I just did it twice on this one. Um, sidewalk expressionism is number seven. And I believe I did it, let's see, one, two, three, four times. And I'm calling it sidewalk expressionism because it's the, the original photograph was paint splatter on the sidewalk. And the last one is called timelines. This one's a little dark, um, but it was a dark photograph to begin with. And the original photograph is the side of a building which was revealed after the building in front of it was dem demolished. So on the side of the building were these little um, 
crevices or uh, indentations where the other building incurred on the other building. So it was, I saw it as kind of a, a bar chart or a timeline of some kind. So I, I used that to riff on the, on the title. But this one looks like three pass-throughs with the 33 and the 33. And finally, here's an approximation of what a triptych would look like. And I've chosen three out of the eight as um, 11 by 14 frames with an 8 by 10 print. So there you have it. Um, I planned on doing more of these, but uh, the printer that I had no longer works. But this can be done um, with any kind of a printer, really, as long as you can have a way of reducing it and then putting it back through the printer. Um, this kind of technique actually goes back to even the earliest photocopiers because people would photocopy something once and then re-photocopy re it and so on. And after a while, it just degrades the image to a point where it's kind of interesting. It looks like a, almost like a painting. There was another artist, uh, Thomas Barrow. And he was famous for his Verifax prints. The Verifax, V-A-R-I-F-A-X, I believe was the first fax machine. And he kind of exploited its, its uh, happy accidents where he would do that similar uh, iterative process where he'd fax things to himself or images and then refax them. And over time, they would create these interesting variegated patterns. If you'd like to order prints of these, uh, I'll put a link in the description. They're available as 8x10s and 16x20s. So the other print is, is double the size, but they still look good. And uh, please contact me if you'd like to actually like to uh, purchase the originals and um, they still look great because it's on a really archival material which is the vellum um, so in any event if you have any questions uh, feel free to contact me